The Japanese know how to do brushes. This is what started my coffee snob journey. My pet peeve with makeup, that took three seconds with one hand on both eyes. This is the technique you need to use, okay? I love it, I love it. Let's bring it back. This is Lip Maestro 400, baby. Okay guys, so I've done my foundation and concealer because that's boring and no one wants to see that. And also I felt kind of pale and ugly. So I just wanted to get a little base going. I put my turtleneck on though before the makeup. I've learned from previous mistakes. I'm gonna wear a turtleneck tonight because it's raining and cold in Dubai. Who knew? Oh, I need my Red Bull. One moment. Mm -mm -mm. It's been a full day, you guys. It's been a full day. I'm going out to Friday night. I got up at like 6.45. So, you know. I'm a little tired today. I'm just gonna quickly like re-blend because obviously like look, we cannot have creases. And I wanted to show you this new Chanel powder. Oh my God, I need brushes. Okay, I'm so happy to have my own space to film. You guys, you have no idea. Okay, so first let's talk about this powder. So I used to use the Givenchy Prisme Libra. This is four times three grams, so 12 grams of product, right? And this was about like I want to say like $60 or something. Like it's expensive in the UAE, maybe even more, maybe 70, crazy, crazy. So I ran out of that. I ran out of it pretty quick. Like I kind of blow through it. This from Chanel is the new, well, it's not new, it's new to me. It's the natural finish loose powder. You actually get 30 grams. You get over double the amount of the Givenchy and it's about the same price. The only thing I noticed with this is when I've done uh, I tried to film a video the other day in the car, a little casual like catch up scene um, for a vlog and I noticed it had really bad flashback. So that's the only thing in this video, hopefully, I'm really hoping that the powder doesn't look crazy, but I do really like this because I have really, really dry under eyes. Chanel beauty products are not supposed to be super heavy. They're supposed to be more light and airy. You know, it's that French beauty vibe, right? hair oh i'm kind of letting it naturally dry just less heat damage i'm gonna blow dry after so i don't want a cakey thick powder especially for under the eyes or on the face and i really love this powder honestly and you get so much more product than the Givenchy. it's really nice and so i always like to set all over the face lately because i mean it's raining tonight and it's cold but typically in dubai it can be very humid and even after two three hours and i'm in the office if i haven't set my full face i'm like so shiny but i do find that this powder for me personally ugh, we blended down the neck a little bit didn't we we've got to set that oh god it's always the neck isn't it this time of year sometimes the face doesn't match the body you've got to kind of you've got to blend it a little bit also my earrings probably have foundation all over them because I blended onto the ears. That's one thing I noticed this week a few times. The ears were a little white compared to the face. So let's just get that makeup off. Let's get these babies sparkling for ya. So I do find this setting powder to be actually quite good. It's very nice. And hopefully I don't look super white. I can't tell because the ring light is like blinding me. What I love to do is use the Natasha Denona lately, the contour sculpting powder. I have my YSL All Hours Powder Foundation that I also love even more actually than this. But like, see, it, it, it can be quite intense at first. The YSL one, I love to use as a bronzer. It's gorgeous. I know that it's under the back seat of my car and it's been there for about a week. And I saw it the other day and I was like, oh, I need to remove that and take it with me upstairs. And then I just like keep forgetting every single day. And every single day I'm like behind the seat, behind the seat. And every single day I forget. So anyways, this is what I like to do. I don't really have a crazy contour routine. I literally just go like this on the nose, you guys, like kind of blend it up in here. I like to keep it a little more natural. Oh, I'm gonna have to wipe this with a towel after, but such is life. We go along the jawline as well to create a little shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of blush. Let's get some color. So this actually, um, Studio Makeup sent this to me ages ago. This is a Canadian beauty company and they are gonna send me a PR package, which I'm excited about. So this, I thought I would just feature. I found it the other day when I was unpacking and organizing the bathroom and I actually love this color. It's the Soft Blend Blush in uh, 06 Sunrise. It's so cute. It's kind of like a, like a peach. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's a really nice blush. I genuinely love it. And I've started using it before actually 
I even knew I was gonna get a PR package from them. I started using it this week. See, you can see it, it's pretty. The only thing is, I hope I've got the right setting with the ring light, you guys. Oh my God, my hands look white with the light. Compared. See, look, it's not that different. It's not that different, but up close, I'm like, oh. Anyways, this is a chaotic makeup tutorial. I'm just showing you a little full glam action since it's been a while. I think that's enough. The lights are so bright, I don't wanna overdo it. But I'm gonna do a little gold action tonight. But in case there's fallout, I'm gonna do the eyes first in case I need to brush any away because I'm gonna do obviously highlight. But first, let's do the eyes. So typically when I'm getting ready lately, I used to always start with the eyes and then do the face. But I just prefer to have all of the foundation and concealer blended underneath first. That way you're not kind of going over around the eye look and like maybe messing with the eyeshadow. So I have this Natasha Denona mini nude palette here. This is very nice. Her shadows are really good quality. Even these minis, very affordable and great quality. I've never actually bought a full size one from her because they're just so big and there's so many colors I know I won't use. So I love these little ones. I also have the Huda Beauty Toffee Brown palette. This is very nice. Remember when those kind of yellow mustard eyes were a trend? That's the shade, but I'm not gonna do it tonight because we're gonna do a little red lipstick action. We're gonna do a little femme fatale vibe. So I'm going to first blend. You know what I wanna try actually? I got sent this, um, not sent, I got this eyeshadow from Bobbi Brown in a Bloomingdale's Beauty Box. Let me grab it. Okay guys, so I got this eyeshadow in a Bloomingdale's Beauty Box. It's, I don't even know what shade it is. It was just in a little plastic wrap, but it's kind of like a, it's like a very neutral crease shade. And I'm gonna use, this Mario Badescu crease brush to uh, blend it out with this tiny little children's size mirror. So basically, oh my God, I need to do my brows. Oh, I'll have to go over those in a little bit here. Bloomingdale's in the UAE is actually amazing. Honestly, they do 90 minute delivery. This is blending nicely. I've never tried Bobbi Brown eyeshadow actually before. Leave a comment below if you have and there's any other products from her brand that you recommend because honestly, I haven't really tried much at all from the brand and this is blending out very nicely as a little crease base shade. Usually I'm just using like bronzer lately unless I do a full eye look, I'll grab something from a palette. But Bloomingdale's in the Middle East is honestly amazing because they do 90 minute delivery and not only that, you get all these points and I didn't realize you get a customized like beauty box based on your purchases. And so because I haven't redeemed any points in over like a year and a half since I shopped with them and found out about their fast delivery, I had this box added to my cart uh, automatically and it was the level four like connoisseur, it was an Italian word, beauty box. And it was literally filled with like, I'm not even kidding you, probably $600 of free product, literally. Augustinus Botter, face cream, there was a full-size Gucci perfume. I got this Armani liquid lipstick full-size. I got a full-size MAC, I got mascaras, like so much stuff, honestly, it was crazy. So what does Sephora give other than like little gifts with purchases, like enter a coupon code and spend $75 to get a mini mascara. Like, you know what I mean? It's like you get legit gifts with Bloomingdale's. So how's that looking? How's that looking? It's just super natural, super natural. So what I'm gonna do is I want a little more, a little more warmth. So I'm gonna use this shade here in this palette. Okay, so I cleaned up the brows a little bit. I'm feeling like this side needs a little bit more love. With eyeshadow as well, it's always useful. Like don't just look at yourself up close. Like you have to put the mirror out because then you will see the shape. Like if the shape of the eye is matching because if you're just looking up close like this, you're not gonna see, you know, maybe one side is higher than the other. I mean, I say that, but like I hope it actually matches because I am using a hand mirror instead of a bathroom mirror. So I want a little more definition. I'm going to either, I feel like this shade in this palette, this is broken so I have to be careful, this shade here or this corner shade there. What do we think, what do we think, what do we think? I think I'm gonna do this, keep it with Huda. This is actually a Sephora Collection Pro Crease 26 brush and you guys, everything will be linked below that I use. 
I love the Sephora collection brushes, honestly. Also, oh sorry, this is a Sephora collection. This is the Bronzer Pro 80. I use this for all over the face. It's so good. Honestly, for bronzer, this is way too large, but this is the second one of these I bought. I lost one. It's synthetic fibers, but it's so soft and really, really thick and luxurious. It's so good. It's not scratchy. And then for the blush, this is so old. This is an OG from Sephora. It's a holiday collection set that I got, but I do love the Sephora collection brushes, to be honest with you, and they are a good price point as well compared to brands like MAC. I find that they are a bit more affordable for sure. And also I know there's a lot of like discourse about natural fibers versus synthetic. Natural is known to pick up pigments a lot better, especially for blending in the past, but now there are so many brands that have really just evolved with the quality and they've answered the beauty community's want for more kind of like vegan, cruelty-free beauty options. So also, of course, they're probably a little bit more affordable to manufacture, potentially. I don't know the economics of it. That's the gist. I love these brushes. I use them all the time. Such a good investment. Honestly, I rarely ever buy new brushes. Oh, so for under the eyes, sorry, I used... This is disgusting. I need to wash it, to be honest. This is from Shoppers Drug Mart. It's just a tapered blush brush. It's perfect for under eye setting. So any Canadian viewers, this is fabulous. It's from the brand Quo. It's the house beauty brand at Shoppers Drug Mart. Highly recommend. Additional option, this is freshly washed. <laughs> See, I hit you with the grime and then I hit you with this. This is from Westman Atelier. I got it in London last year. It's a synthetic brush, but it's so soft. It feels like a really luxurious Hakuhodo brush. If you're familiar with the Japanese master brush company, so hard to order from. I lost my order, took like three months to arrive, and then I ended up leaving the brushes in a hotel somewhere. It was very sad because they were not cheap, and I miss them dearly, but this feels like Hakuhodo, legit. So anyone in maybe the UK or who has access to Sephora with a Westman Atelier, this brush is the powder brush. Oh, and it's made in Japan, that's why it's so good. The Japanese know how to do brushes. I love Japanese people, food, everything, honestly. Amazing. So I don't want to go too heavy with the crease because we're going to do a red lip and we don't want to look crazy. Not crazy, but you know, you focus more on the eyes or the lips, right? So I think, honestly, that's probably good for now. I'm just going to re-blend a little back with this crease brush just to kind of add a little bit more shading near the top just so it's not so stark. It's the subtlest little thing you can do, but also what you can do, which I should have done before, I'm messing up the order, is take a little powder brush. Uh, actually, that's not the right one. This brush, I don't even know the brand. It's from like a beauty boutique in uh, Sydney, British Columbia. Anyone watching from Canada, you know that's on Vancouver Island. I lived there for seven years in high school. I bought this brush from a little beauty boutique that was uh, having a sale. I think it was maybe, 15 at the time and I was working as a barista in a Italian coffee shop. This is what started my coffee snob journey and I was working there and there was this little beauty shop nearby and it always was expensive but they had a sale because they were unfortunately closing going out of business and I bought this little brush. It's amazing quality, it's natural fibers but it's amazing, amazing quality. So if you get good brushes you can honestly hold on to them for dear life and they will last you. That's why it's worth it to invest in beauty tools and not cheap out if you can, or buy one at a time as you have the budget because really proper application with the proper tools, it doesn't matter how much you spend on your makeup. If you're not using the right tools to apply it, a hundred dollar foundation can look terrible. There's drugstore alternatives to everything, of course, but there is a time and place for everything. And sometimes, you need to invest a little bit, not in every aspect, but there's key things I will never cheap out on. That is crease brushes, that is powder brushes, and that is blending tools such as I love the Beauty Blender. I used to use the Real Techniques one all the time, but I stopped using it. Even though I'm on a budget now, I still buy the Beauty Blender because I just find the blend from that specific sponge. I have the black one here. It's a little dirty because I just used it. The blend, the quality, it's just, mm. Chef's kiss, chef's kiss. So what do we need now? We need a little something, something on the lids and we need to do under the eyes. So what I like to do for 
under the eyes is this is actually an OG brush. This is Morphe M432, baby. Do you guys remember the Morphe days? Yes, I'm so sad to hear that they are going bankrupt and they're closing stores around the US. That's like the OG, it feels like the end of an era, doesn't it? Morphe going bankrupt, like doesn't that feel like the end of an era? You know, I mean, that's OG beauty YouTube. I remember being in university watching beauty YouTube religiously. Every time I got ready, I would always have Jaclyn Hill on in the background, Tati, I was even a Jeffree Star fan. I know he's controversial, but he's really making a comeback. I don't know how you guys feel about Jeffree Star. I like how he's a little more down to earth now and he kind of got that Wyoming ranch going on. I saw on Instagram the other day, I was creeping a bit. He has like meat he sells in Wyoming to the local restaurant and he's got a burger named like the Star Shack Burger. So crazy. So different than the old uh, content we used to see, hey? But I'm all for people that want self-improvement and positive mindsets. So just took this under the eyes. Definition, definition, definition. And it's really subtle. Like, look how light this looks, but already I have so much definition under the eyes and it makes the blue pop. If you have blue eyes, you wanna go more towards warm tones because even though I love this mini nude palette, I use it for New Year's, for example, it's more of a cool toned palette. You know, I always go back to a warm smoky eye, honestly, I love a warm smoky eye. This is like an OG long form content video today. I actually am gonna use this double as a highlight brush. This is the Hermes Poudre de Refeve. Perma Brass 01. This was like $110. And honestly, you guys, once I broke through the top layer, I made a TikTok about it. I'm gonna use this for the inner corners, open that baby up. And there was a hard outer layer on it, like some of the NARS highlights and the dual intensity eyeshadows have. And I was like, this is the biggest waste of money ever. And now that I've kind of broken it down, especially in the middle, the edges are still a little testy. It's really a beautiful highlight, but I will often, as I will do tonight, blend it with the finger a little bit just to really like build that up a little more. I will say though, nothing will ever compare in quality and intensity, no matter how you feel about her, as the Champagne Pop highlight by Jaclyn Hill. I miss that highlight so much. I had, I think, a cracked one of it in Canada. See, we've opened up the eye area. We've really opened that, but because we've done that, I just wanna go back and add a tiny bit of definition. So the eyes and the face takes the longest. Now it's gonna be a breeze. I'm gonna go in with my OG, 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 Inkwell style liquid eyeliner from Sephora collection. I've used this since I was 14 years old. This is the high precision brush. It is not a felt tip, it is a brush, and this is black. Now, Guerlain has a similar one and it's always been on my radar. I wish I bought it when I had a rich boyfriend, but I will get it one day. I promise you, I will get it, I will get it. Anyways, let's do a wing. When you're doing your liquid eyeliner, ladies or gentlemen, ladies or gentlemen, I love men in makeup. Men in makeup are definitely welcome on this channel. With the wing, I always used to get, because I have hooded eyes, that issue where when you do a wing and you don't like, you don't look up as you're doing it and you just kind of go like this, it looks good at first. And then when you close the eyes, it's like, it's just like a curve, there's no wing. So now I've watched enough tutorials as of late to just make sure it's outlined properly, 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 properly before it's filled in. Because once you seal that tip, it is so hard to undo it because you have to remove the makeup, put the foundation on, re-blend the eyeshadow, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. So really just make sure that when you're looking at yourself straight on, you can see that defined wing. This one is a little bit dry. Shake it up. I've got another one somewhere. I don't know if I threw it out by mistake. I might have meant to throw this one out and I threw the other one out. Oh dear, Jesus, take the wheel. You don't want too much eyeliner on the uh, brush when you're doing this, because if you have too much, like I have here, it could look even worse and just gloop on the edge. Okay, that's not as defined as I would like it to be, to be honest, because this eyeliner is drying out, but you get the idea. So from looking straight ahead, when you look down, obviously, it's like, let's cut a right? I like the inkwell style, not the felt tip, because 
you can really manage the way the weight of your hand lays the product. I feel like with felt tips, it's a little trickier. They're just not as consistent and I need consistency in my life. I'm a cancer for God's sake. And I like to connect the eyeliner down into here, kind of like a feline vibe. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the mascara on this side. You don't wanna do mascara when you've just done the eyeliner if it's wet, because in the odd case that you blink or something, the eyeliner can you know get on your eyelid. So this is the Lancome Hypnose Mascara. Noir Hypnotic is the color. I think I've tried this before. This is just like a little mini, this is an iconic mascara from them. Obviously, you guys, you need to do a little touch of mascara, not a ton. You don't wanna do anything clumpy. You don't wanna do anything volumizing. Always stick with maybe a lengthening or non-clumpy mascara right before you do your lashes. My pet peeve with makeup, and you might disagree with me, but is when I see it, someone with fake eyelashes on, but they haven't done any mascara underneath, and the light hits you, the fake eyelashes completely look black and glossy as they are fake, usually silk or synthetic fiber, right? And the natural lash will catch the light if there's any especially powder, eyeshadow, foundation that's gotten on them. And you know, as it happens when you do your makeup, they look light brown right now. And that shows in the light, it's like a little row of light brown eyeshadow. It's like a little row of light brown lashes under the falsies and it's just a little pet peeve of mine. So you don't have to do a ton of mascara because you're already putting a falsie on, but that's just what I like to do. Okay, so now that we did the eyeshadow, we can also highlight while the mascara dries and before we do the lashes. It's usually my routine, it's my routine. So. This is the Hermes Poudre Dore Fevre, as I said. And I'm taking this Royale and Lang Nickel Highlight Brush. I don't know the number, sorry. I got this in iMats ages ago, ages ago. Went with a girlfriend of mine. And isn't this nice? You know, once it actually broke through the top layer, it is actually quite nice. It's not worth $110, absolutely not. I like to go down the nose a little bit, you know, slim the nose, highlight, contour here a little bit, and highlight. You can see that extra little pop. Don't forget Cupid's bow, ladies and gentlemen. It adds such a sexy little touch to the lip area. Just opens up the lips. Look at that. It's just like, mm, hello, I'm here, I'm ready. Also, I look really weird. I should have done my eyebrows in the beginning of the video. So I look better. So this is the Benefit, new product to me. Benefit, precisely my brow pencil. I think the packaging is really cool. Similar price point as the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, but I think the packaging is way cooler. And Sephora was sold out. I could not find the Anastasia brow pencils or any um, regular price point brow pencil in Bloomingdale's. It was all like Dior and brands like this, especially for, you know, like the Tom Ford one, it's supposed to be amazing not really what I want to spend on a brow pencil. Like I go through these things once a month, you know, at least. So maybe every four to six weeks, I opted to go to Sephora and grab a brow pencil. ABH was also sold out once again in my color and taupe. This is a shade 3.5 for any blondes. It's a cool toned ash brown, light brown shade. You always want to go a slightly darker, kind of following the color of your roots but not too, too dark. I really, really don't like warm toned eyebrow pencils on me. I think it looks so weird, so weird. Anyways, I'm gonna keep doing this and speed it up or something, cause it's boring. Okay, so those are pretty much on. I don't consider myself someone who's ever been really good at eyebrows personally. I prefer just the precision pencils because I don't like any of the pomades. I feel like they're so intense for me. But lately I was watching some of my old videos and my brows I positively hated. Like I just, I wasn't defining them here enough and I, I don't think they were matching in shape. So I'm really trying to work on the brows. For your eyebrows, you should always try and kind of line up your pupil, just kitty corner to the arch like that. I don't know if that helps. Anyways, it has this little spoolie. I'm not a brow expert, you guys. Okay, so since this is a nighttime glam, I'm also gonna use this ABH brow gel in taupe. It's so good. 
just to kind of add a little extra definition but i don't love the look of really brushed out like laminated brows to be honest i don't love that like i like to keep everything kind of neat and in place and like the laminated brows trend was just a little weird to me to be honest like i just i i don't love brow trends because i feel like they just come and go so much I just like to keep it natural. That way when I'm seeing photos of myself, I'm not like, oh, that was the time that like, you know, those crazy Instagram brows were in, you know? And I like to just sometimes, if I have any little pigments of anything, just go through with a little powder brush. Just kind of brush anything away throughout. Like I've got a little fluff there. Okay, so now we are ready for lashes. I got this little kit. From Sephora, it's not the cleanest, sorry. It's from Velour. This is the Everyday Essentials. This is a pair of silk lashes. You get a little applicator, which is somewhere, and then you get the adhesive. And this was the same price as one pair of Velour lashes. So if you can hop on this set, this I think was just called, I don't know what these are called, but they're so nice. I think it was just the Everyday Essentials lash kit, and it's really nice. Now, my nails are kind of like lash applicators, so I just usually grab the lashes off with my nails. I totally forgot to clean these from last time, by the way. I usually just rip the glue off, but they're fine. The Velour Lash Glue as well, by the way, I used to always use the Duo, and I did really like it, but it had that weird, like, silicone, like, fish smell. Like, it was just not pleasant so this glue does not smell at all doesn't irritate the eyes and honestly you guys in my last vlog i definitely definitely when i was going to dragon mart i definitely was hungover i definitely slipped in my makeup and used a makeup wipe to cleanse the foundation off but i kept the eye makeup on because i didn't feel like washing my face fully that day so this is a brush applicator i'm just brushing this all over and yeah, anyways, this glue is really good. It lasts through being um, really, really, really tired and falling asleep with your makeup on. So what I like to do with lashes, guys, this is going to change your life if you're not a big lash expert. Put the glue on, curl them like this. That Chanel powder is a little tipsy right now. We do not want to smash that. So you want to curl the lash like this, literally in your hand blow on it let the glue dry for about 30 seconds and then put it on because if you put the lashes on right away and the glue hasn't gotten tacky at all then you're gonna have a little trouble and i can do it like this when the glue is tacky you literally just lay it down it's already gripping the eye line you want to get it as close as possible and that's it you guys how long did that take about three seconds. This changes your life, honestly, and make sure that the eyelashes are just as close to your natural eye line as possible. And you can use an applicator if you don't have these offensively long black claw nails. I totally understand, it's not for everyone. So that's that, that's the application, literally, literally. If you just spend a few extra seconds letting that glue dry, you just saw me do that with one hand in three seconds. And they're not raising, they're not lifting, the glue is tacky, they are in place, they are secure to the eye line. You just kind of drag it out, secure it here and drag it out against the eye line. Amazing, I'll pop on the other one now. So once again, glue is on, bend them, curl them, blow them, 30 seconds, and then one hand, one hand it. Can we do it a second time? Second time's a charm. You're allowing the glue to set in this shape so that when you drag it on your eye, it's already ready to go. You will not have lashes lifting and bothering you. I swear to God. Red Bull break. And just like that, just like that, you guys. That took three seconds with one hand on both eyes. No lifting. This is the technique you need to use, okay? And what a beautiful style. So what I'm going to finish with is the Dior Show Iconic Overcurl Waterproof Mascara. Why? Because it's raining. Second, because if you have any watery eyes like me, sometimes when I laugh a lot, my eyes water, which sometimes it messes up the eyeliner. So I always like to bring a little concealer with me just in case. 
This is really drying out and I need a new one. We are gonna make it work. I do not recommend this as a regular waterproof mascara at all, but for the bottom lashes, it's fire. It's fire. You just literally apply. For me, bottom lashes, less is more. Less is more because I have hooded eyes. I don't wanna make them look smaller, but I wanna still accentuate. So I literally just dab lightly. I don't even run the brush through. I just dab on top the lightest amount. Actually a dry mascara for the under eyes, waterproof, if you're going out or you're in any kind of rainy conditions is best because if it's a fresh wet mascara, you could mess up the makeup under the eyes, guys. So you wanna use a drier formula or just a mascara that's kind of on its way out. Ideally with a brush that's maybe a little more defining, a little bit more thin than this, so you don't make an error. You literally just tap, literally tap, 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 tap. We have a little extra definition, but we don't have spider lashes. We do not want spider chunky lashes. No, 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 no. Okay, now I'm gonna do lips last. I'm gonna blow dry my hair. I'm gonna continue drink this Red Bull. So we're gonna finish with the best for last. But before that, I will now set the face because I want the makeup to start doing its thing. I have this setting powder, I love it. It's alcohol-free, I believe, oh God. Yep, this is alcohol-free, I love this. I used to use the all-nighter from Urban Decay, cult favorite, I know, or the Dermablend Pro one, but they both have alcohol in them and I do not like to cause my skin to dry out with alcohol products, aging, no, 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 bueno. This is from Ofra, super affordable, got it on Noon, it's an AE website, but you can find this on any makeup retailer, maybe Ulta for my American viewers, maybe Selfridges for my UK viewers, I'm sorry, I don't know where to get this in the UK, but this is called the Makeup Fixer, it's a little bit dirty, the only thing I don't like is the spray isn't as fine as the all-nighter. So I like to go from far away and just fan it. And I try not to look up when I do this on the odd occasion that there is a droplet on my eyeliner. And if I look up, it will transfer onto the eyelid. So always when you set your makeup, you want to make sure you're looking down and fanning the face because if you look up and there's any droplets, you will get your eyeliner transferring and that is not fun to deal with. Also, I'm just gonna do a quick little da, 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 like that. Okay, the face is set, the face is set. Okay, I'm gonna dry the hair. I'm gonna give it a little straighten. Oh my God, the hair routine, I didn't even show you. Quickly, 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 my friends are texting me. They're like, where are you? I'm like, ah, I'm getting ready. I have a paddle brush here from Shu Umera. This is from a salon I went to in London. I forget what it was called. It's somewhere in Knightsbridge, I totally forget. They did good color though, but she wasn't good at reapplying my extensions. I had tape-ins and it was expensive. It was 450 pounds, you guys, my God. Hair and makeup and uh, nails are expensive in London like Dubai. So any UK viewers, if you wanna visit Dubai, similar prices. So what I do, this is the Color Wow Dream Coat, okay? I love it, I love it, I love it. It's supposed to last four shampoos. Let me just show you here. It's supposed to last four shampoos. I've already sprayed a little, but I'm just adding more. But you need to use it with heat. It is heat activating, okay? So you need to use it with heat not on dry hair. This is like not dry, so it's fine. It makes your hair so soft, so silky. It's also a heat protector. Amazing, amazing. If you have dry, brittle hair, try this. This is absolutely incredible. I will link it below. Everything I use today, I will try and link below for you. I do have affiliate links, but if you buy anything, I'll earn commission, which gives me more freedom to show you guys more products, more content, more experiences, and more sexy Italian home accents. This is the Augustinus Bader hair oil with TFC8. I love this so much. This is a little bit of a splurge. It has this dropper like so. It's lovely. I love to put just maybe like three or four drops of this. Not much, not much at all. It is so nice. It's not a greasy hair oil. I've tried others. I didn't ever buy the Olaplex oil because it's bright yellow and that freaks me out because my hair is so blonde. So this is a completely clear oil. It is beautiful, I love it. On the website it looks yellow, but when you actually buy it, it's clear. So for blondes, 
This is a beautiful hair oil. I always like to do just a tiny bit, just with the remnants on my palms here, just to give it a little hydration on my natural hair. So just again, you can see this is totally clear. For my blondes, this is for you, okay? You need to get on this oil. So good. Okay, now I'm gonna actually blow dry my hair. Balmain hair dryer. I just honestly use this to brush through. I don't like to use a round brush. I'm not coordinated enough and I hate them. That's just how it is. So I just kind of blow dry like that, but I'm gonna leave the ring light set up because I'm on a tiny crunch now. I'll be back with dry hair. Okay, you guys, I'm back. I have straight, silky, fabulous hair. I have red lipstick on, Giorgio Armani. This is the shade. This is Lip Maestro 400, baby. Look at this applicator. This is sexy, this is juicy. I was gonna do a gloss, but I don't think we need it. Look at that. Now, what I will say already, from what I noticed about applying this, when you do red liquid lipstick without a lip liner, as I always do, I never use lip liner, like rarely, unless I'm doing it all over the lips as a shade. It's like silence, no music, no speaking, complete concentration. You have your face up against that bathroom mirror, holding on for dear life while you apply that lipstick, I swear to God. So the pigmentation of this, the formula is so comfortable. The applicator is amazing. It feels creamy, it feels amazing. It's a little bit of a risk on a windy night with my blonde hair. I'm gonna have to be very diligent, but I will say the NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment Liquid Lip in the shade Don't Stop is my ride or die, and this hasn't topped it. It's juicy, it's sexy, but there are areas where there needs to be a little more pigmentation. You have to go over it a second time, I notice. With the NARS, it is a one-stop wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Just FYI. So I'm gonna see how this wears throughout the night. I'm taking a risk going out, having a few beverages and using a new red lipstick, which I don't know how the formula will perform. Sometimes they bunch up if you over apply them. So I'm gonna bring this with me just to be safe with my little compact in my purse. I'm gonna get dressed now, but no look is complete without a fragrance. Tonight's fragrance is another 13 by Lalabo. This, I don't even know what the notes are. I need to research. It smells mm, so sexy. So comforting on a cold, rainy day like tonight. Just absolutely fabulous. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this Get Ready With Me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more beauty, fashion, and lifestyle content from me. I am back on YouTube now, you guys. So definitely support, follow me on Instagram, TikTok. I'm even posting on Facebook now. What is going on? I'm back, baby, I am back. So, so nice to have you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed this long form in-depth tutorial. I haven't done one in a long time. I thought, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to the days. So thank you so much for watching. I love you. Mm -hmm.